everyone about whom the internet is wrong right now. Internet machine, and even in the newspaper machines, uh, there are many, many stories right now about WikiLeaks revealing that Cuba banned my next guest's movie, the movie Sicko, Michael Moore's expose of the U.S. healthcare system. The story saying that WikiLeaks has revealed that that movie was banned in Cuba. That's according to WikiLeaks. It was leaked. So it must be true, except it's not. <laughs> Mr. Moore's movie was not banned in Cuba. It, in fact, was shown in Cuban movie theaters, where Cubans saw it in Cuba. It was even on Cuban TV, which I also have it on good authority, is in Cuba. But if you look at headlines about this WikiLeaked cable, you would not know that. The State Department cable that they published said something that wasn't true about Michael Moore's movie. The cable said Sicko was banned. Sicko was not banned. But because the claim was in a secret government document that was leaked, that was not supposed to see the light of day, it makes it seem like it must be true, that it's been revealed, right? But it's not true. It was leaked, but it's false. And that is one of the thorny, complicated, doesn't fit on a bumper sticker points about WikiLeaks. When you leak stuff, the fact that you are bringing to light something that was supposed to be kept secret makes what you are bringing to light seem both true and important. It makes leaking stuff a really great way to distribute false information. If you want to spread a rumor, for example, that some foreign ruler, say uh, King Hamantashen of Fakistan, or Bill, uh, you want to spread a rumor that he's secretly a woman, that he's secretly selling out his country to Fakistan's sworn enemies, if you just put out a press release saying that, nobody is going to believe you about King Hamantashen of Fakistan. However, if you arrange for that information to be leaked, oh no, we didn't want you to find out that we knew that about the king. Then it ends up being a bad day for the king. It is a great way to spread disinformation. Even normally skeptical sources suspend their disbelief. Oh my god, Sicko was banned in Cuba. There's the headline in the Guardian newspaper. It's not true, even if it was in the leak. Here's something else about WikiLeaks that does not fit on a bumper sticker. On the 28th of November, WikiLeaks dumped all these State Department documents, right? The next day, the United States government came out, came out guns blazing, calling the leaks an attack on the international community. Within a week, Sweden issued a European arrest warrant to go get the guy behind WikiLeaks in the UK to answer questions about rape charges originating in Sweden. The timing could not be more suspicious. The man accused says he's being pursued for political reasons, and it's pretty easy to follow his logic. But even if you are suspicious about the timing, there are two women who went to the police with what are essentially date rape charges against this guy. That does not fit on a bumper sticker. Can your suspicion about the forces arrayed against Julian Assange and WikiLeaks, your suspicion about the timing and the pursuit of these charges, coexist with respect for the women making these accusations against him and with a commitment to take rape allegations seriously, even when the person accused is someone that, for other reasons, you like? Joining us now is one of the great filmmakers of our time who has emerged as a stalwart defender of WikiLeaks. He's the man who just posted Julian Assange's $20,000 bail. He is my friend Michael Moore. Hi. Thank you for doing this. Street Do you believe it? Whoa! I know! <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. This is, uh, it's like, pretend we're not here. Oh, All right. Yeah, we're, we're not going to discuss uh, your art collection, are we? Yes, uh, in great detail, <laughs> actually. <laughs> Just for people who don't know, you know, Steve Martin was here, talked about his art collection, and then they had to give everybody their money back, so. I will, however, be um, acting out the jerk. <laughs> so that will happen later. Um, so let, let's let's talk about this because I know I, I, I know that, that they, yeah. the Teamsters that night had to put Steve Martin in the trunk of his limo just to get him out of here. <laughs> the audience was so angry. I know the 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 Julian Assange bail situation has been has gotten a, a lot of attention. It has sort of, uh, blown up in lots of different directions, left, right, and center. I would love to hear from you why you posted his bail. Uh, well, <laughs> I just I, first of all I think that WikiLeaks has done such an important uh, job to get the truth out about so many of the things that we haven't uh, been told the truth about. It's very interesting, the memo, that the cable that you re uh, about the Cuba uh, screening of my, of my film, that was a, that, even that cable, which was a lie, 
was good to see because you saw how the Bush administration people located in the uh, intersection in Havana were sending back cables to the State Department uh, assuring them that you know the, that sickle, the, the Michael Moore isn't really that liked by the Cubans so don't you know yeah which you would think is kinda of weird you think they wanna actually put that on me you know that yeah. Castro and I are sleeping with each other right. so. <laughs> well you think they would also want to get it right if they're promoting it to the government as useful information for the government you would think that they wanted to check and see if it was true yeah but this is all part of it the sort of the, when the smear takes place and yeah. and uh, you've had Wendell Potter Keith has had Wendell Potter on the show this is the health insurance executive who's come forward to um, talk about how uh, they spent millions of dollars trying to smear me trying to uh, put things out there about me that weren't true in order so that people wouldn't go see sicko so I'm very sensitive to when I, I see anyone accused like this especially when uh, the government in this case our government has something very much at stake in stopping WikiLeaks and man when you've got the vice president of the United States on Sunday calling him a high-tech terrorist you've got people in Congress calling for you know uh, uh, him to be arrested Sarah Palin people uh, uh, other pundits wanting uh, saying it would be okay to assassinate him it's just like um, I, you know I don't know man I, I just was I was raised a certain way and it's I I and I was raised to be a good Christian in if I can say that yeah here um, look at me I, <laughs> MCA. You want to know what the C stands for? Don't worry. I was going to say the Islamic Community Center is quite well here in Manhattan. Uh, <laughs> no, but, then, but that's but that's true with with all religions. I think teach the same basic thing, that and especially um, that you have to stand up for those who are considered the worst. And and that in this case, as an American, you have to believe that that person has a right. Uh, to be heard, a right to a trial, and to be presumed innocent until proven guilty. Now, I know nothing about what happened between Mr. Assange and these two women, and I have to say quite clearly, and I've been a huge advocate uh, of this since I, I, when I was 19 years old, I helped start the, the first rape crisis center in Flint, Michigan, so this has been a, a very serious issue for me for a very long time. Every woman who claims to have been sexually assaulted or raped has to be, must be taken seriously and those charges have to be investigated to the fullest extent possible and, and for too long too many women have been abused uh, in our society because they weren't listened to and, and, and they just got shoved aside or they, whatever, it was just it was, it was not, the older people in here remember the way it used to be, it's not that much better now it got a little better because of the women's movement made that happen so uh, so I think uh, uh, these these two alleged victims have to be treated very seriously and Mr. Assange has to answer the questions that's not what's at issue here I'm much more concerned about that that there's a concerted attempt to stop WikiLeaks and and I think WikiLeaks open leaks anybody that is trying to do the job of telling us the truth and how about <laughs> I mean, poor Bradley Manning, hmm. the soldier who sits in Quantico tonight. This man has been in solitary confinement for seven months. Seven months. And his crime is, his crime is that he did what they said at Nuremberg were to do. If you see something happening, especially during wartime, that is illegal, immoral, you have a responsibility as a human being to stand up and say something and he came across allegedly the video of our soldiers firing from a helicopter and murdering two reporters from Reuters along with a bunch of Iraqi civilians that is being done in my name and with my tax dollars I want to know when that's going on and I admire anybody who stands up and tells us that's going on he should be rewarded not well, be in hundreds, prison of documents if they all came from Manning and if that if what you're describing there in terms of exposing that is one thing among hundreds of thousands of other things that he exposed do you want to hear the answer from him about why he chose to release everything wholesale rather than releasing the one thing that outraged him I mean the cable about Muammar Gaddafi having a busty Ukrainian nurse was not an Amer was not an outrage yeah. this was not this was not him blowing the whistle on something mm -hmm. this was him personally yeah. taking it upon himself to declassify hundreds of thousands of documents 
Well, I don't know. Again, I wasn't there. Yeah, I um, want to hear the explanation. But for I'd that. like to hear it. Yeah. And and I would assume uh, that you know this is a young person, and so one's level of maturity maybe isn't at the level, say, a Daniel Ellsberg's maturity was at during the Vietnam War. But but we're a better people as a result of knowing the truth of what took took place in Iraq and Afghanistan. And now with the wider WikiLeaks cables, that that that. Um, I mean, Rachel, this never gets said. I mean, we talk about the two wars that we're in, Iraq and Afghanistan. We're not in two wars. We're fighting six wars. Why isn't this said every night on the news? It's not Iraq and Afghanistan. Our military is performing actions in Pakistan. It's performing actions in Yemen, in the Horn of Africa, in Colombia. We're involved in six wars right now. We're a six-war country. That's what's going on. Why isn't that being said? I want to know about that. That's why I want WikiLeaks and, and people who are whistleblowers to come forward and tell us the truth about what's being done in our name and with our money. We will be right back with Michael Moore live at the 92nd Street Y here in New York. Please stay with us. We are back at the 92nd Street Y here in New York City with Academy Award winning Michael Moore, talking about WikiLeaks, is there, should governments be allowed to keep anything secret? Is there anything that government should be allowed to keep secret? Yes. You, yes. yes, absolutely. Yeah. Um, but uh, the problem with us is that we've behaved very badly in the last decade. And we went to war essentially based on a group of lies. Because of that, and because of the, the calamity that we've caused, the deaths that we're responsible for, both of our own soldiers and the Iraqis, I think <laughs> if I were king of the world, I would just say, you know what, United States, we love you, you're great, you got to, you know, but um, you've, you've misbehaved here, and we've got to turn the lights on now, and we have to pay attention to what you're up to. So I think the lights have to stay on us for a while, because the people in power can't be trusted based on what they've done in the last decade. Are you, one of the WikiLeaks cables that just, uh, that, that just surfaced, just posted at the Guardian website, we were just talking about this, is um, about uh, your movie Fahrenheit 9-11. Uh, a screening of it being stopped? Yeah, well, this, was, this was just while I was waiting backstage there, they just came across the wire that um, there's a WikiLeaks cable tonight with me in it again and um, the Bush administration the State Department um, heard that there that a cabinet minister the, the minister for environment in New Zealand was going to host a screening of Fahrenheit 9-11 they sent a cable uh, to New Zealand telling the ambassador to get on the phone with the prime minister who he calls to tell him to get his cabinet minister to stop having this screening of Michael Moore's film. And then the cable kind of brags about how, due to the series of calls that they made to the government of New Zealand, they were able to stop, or not, they were able to get the cabinet minister to withdraw being the host of the Michael Moore screening. Now, if they were micromanaging me yeah. that much, or if they were that concerned about the truth in Fahrenheit 9-11, that they had to go after a screening in a place I don't even really know where it is. <laughs> I mean, I know it's way away, like, too long to sit and coach for me. <laughs> it's like, I, I just, I don't... You want to know. I, yeah. Yes, I want to know. I, well, because I think it speaks to the larger issue. If they had the time for that, what else, you know, are these guys up to? And that's why full disclosure, transparency is absolutely critical. And, and we need to not only support WikiLeaks, which is more than just about one individual, um, and let me just say again, if that individual is guilty of those crimes, I hope he suffers the full extent of what the law can do to him uh, for that. Everybody agrees with that, right? I mean, this is, this is, you have to... But WikiLeaks is more than just this one man. It's a whole group of people around the world trying to do this, this great work of transparency. Michael Moore, Academy Award winning filmmaker. I am not as much, I am not 100% with you on this. I think you're making an incredibly articulate case for it, and you being persuasive about it is going to change the you way mean about full, about You mean it. about full disclosure? About full disclosure. I just, just I, I, uh, I think that. Uh, I think that we believe stuff that is leaked to us in a way that is uh, that is can be dangerous. By if people choose to do it in a yes. malicious way, it hasn't been done in a malicious way, but it could be. And I, I agree. But yeah. but the point of what happened to me with the Cuba cable is that's why the Guardian, the New York Times, and the papers have to take these cables and then do real journalism, real journalism, real investigative reporting. That's what we're missing these days. That's what we're
Michael Moore. <laughs> I'm not with you, 100%. Absolutely. Rachel Maddow Show live on the 92nd Street Y in New York City.